Greetings this morning from Botswana. I've just been rather moved uh, today. And as you can see, I did a little preparation for this video, as you will see. But there's something I wanted to share with you, really just something about the nearness of God. And I'm convinced that God wants to have a relationship with his people. It's not just something that we go and serve him uh, blindly, uh, just going through rituals and stuff. But he really means it when he says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you from 1 Peter 5, 7, I believe it is. So I just wanted to share something of my life from the distant past, but and I hope that it's an encouragement to you and just to call upon the Lord at all times to know how close he is. As I think about this time in my life, this was a time in my life I had fallen from the Lord, meaning I had become very worldly. You know, my prayer life, my devotion life was nothing. It's not that I didn't believe in God, but I got caught up in the world. I was living in a big metropolitan area, and I was very distracted. And so it was at this time though that the Lord chastened me. He rebuked me, and he brought me back to himself. I repented and was following him, trying to follow him. In a way, I was trying to get my feet back under me and to have the focus on spiritual things. Well, one of the things that was going on in my life at this time I became aware that I had developed a bad habit. Uh, perhaps some of you have heard the saying that he hasn't got a prayer. Or sometimes if you're talking about yourself, which usually it pertained to me, I'd say, oh, I haven't got a prayer, which means there is no, basically it means it's impossible. There's no chance. I think in Botswana, it's kind of a foreign concept. We have our own expressions in English, but I think most in the English speaking world would recognize, say, oh, he hasn't got a prayer which means you might as well, you know, might as well give up. There's no chance it's going to happen. Well, I was using this saying at this time, probably uh, maybe once a week. It wasn't an incredible amount of times, but I became aware that I was saying this and I thought, that's terrible. I haven't got a prayer. He hasn't got a prayer. I mean, what <clears throat> do I have faith in God? You know, we all need a lot more faith. We certainly do. But God's abilities are not limited. And I just felt like it was dishonoring to him, and I wanted to stop saying, stop using that saying. Most of the time, I, I did use it with regard to myself and thinking about something I was going to endeavor in. And so during this time, maybe about two months, no longer, I was praying, I was asking for God to help me to put it away. And sometimes the situation would come up and I'd say, oh, I haven't got a prayer. Oh, I haven't got a prayer. I would always start saying prayer. You know, I would the, the P, the PR would always come out. And I mean, I knew that was the crucial part, you know, that I didn't want to that I didn't want to participate in. And so I was dealing with this at that time. And that's what sets up for this situation. Again, I apologize. This is a little lengthy, but you'd have to know the circumstance uh, to really understand uh, what was going on at that time. And so as I was saying, I, I lived in metropolitan Boston area uh, in the southern, a southern city called Quincy, or as the natives would pronounce it, Quincy. Uh, and so at this time, I was a very, very intense driver. I mean, I really was. Uh, I would know all of the traffic signals. I knew exactly what they did, how they were timed, what I could expect, all of that. Uh, myself and numerous of my friends were the same way. It's really not a, not a great thing because, well, for a Christian, it's not a great thing. You're really being distracted by something fairly petty. But I knew these signals at the time. And so this day I was coming up on a roadway that I had traveled, I'd say, probably five or six times a week over a period of maybe almost five years. I mean, I knew this section of traffic. And uh, so here I've done this trying to make do with the resources that I have. I'm not saying I'm a great artist, but I think this will give you the idea anyway of what was going on at the time. And so this particular circumstance, of course, here is the car and I'm traveling this way. These red dots represent traffic lights, okay? And so as I'm coming up to this light, now you know they have signals that are timed. It would be time. I have to go through both of these traffic lights to get to home, to get to where I'm going. And so as I get to this traffic light, I'm stopped. I'm all alone. 
and I am the seventh car from the traffic light. Seven, I am number seven. Now, I had learned in my times past that to get through both lights and to get through the second light, even on the yellow, I could be no more than the fourth car in back of the light, no more than number four. And even then, I'm going through the yellow. And there were other issues with this, too. It wasn't every time that I was number four that I could make it. You see, first, I would come to this, inter there's this part intersection here. Just as the light would be turning green for me as I travel through, typically there would be a lot of cars pulling out like this, pulling, you know, from their timed area that they were going through. Uh, not always, but probably four out of five times it was like that. And so I had, I had a, a double problem coming to that light. So I'd say that even if I were the fourth car back of the light, there was probably, it's probably only one out of every three or four times that I would actually make it through both lights and on the yellow. This time I was number seven. And I never even should have been looking at the traffic light. I never should have been counting or doing anything, but I'm sitting there by myself and I'm just, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm watching, I'm just watching, watching the cars. So here we are eventually. We get the green light, or I get the green light. My way, our traffic gets the green light. Sure enough, cars from here start pulling out right at the end as it's turning. And that just, that just, I mean, I mean, that just makes everything worse. When that starts happening, you have absolutely, you know, it's, you, you know, you're, you're just frustrated. It can't, it can't happen. So as I'm sitting there, I see these cars starting to pull out. Please understand, I don't remember exactly what I said as I'm kind of talking to myself. I said, I don't know why I'm looking at this. I never should have looked at it. There's no way that I can make it through these lights. I don't have a... And I got this big smile on my face because for the first time in two months, I didn't say it. I didn't start to say prayer. I said, I don't have a... And I just got this smile and I said, chance. To all appearances to look at this, I don't have a chance, but I always have a God who hears prayer. So I start moving. I start going through. I get through the first intersection. And that alone would have been a miracle at the seventh car back. Get all the way through. I'm watching. I'm watching. Do you know something? These lights stayed green the entire way through. Both of them. I'm going through in the second light. I'm like, my mouth is hanging open. How does that happen? There is a scripture that says, where God is saying, those that honor me, I will honor. But to me, it's just a testimony of how close God is. We can really do nothing for him. Our best efforts are pathetic for what he has done for us. But I just wanted you to be encouraged by this testimony. And forgive the pathetic artwork. I just tried to make do with the resources that I have. But again, here I was, the seventh car back. I could be no more than the fourth car back. And even then, I wouldn't make it more than one out of three or four times. And I would make it on the yellow. Seventh car back. These lights stayed green all the way through. That is my God. Please, indeed. Don't be ashamed to cast all your care upon him because he does care for you.